Our next speaker is a theoretical physicist who's trying to continue Einstein's dream of finding a theory of everything. So he is a co-founder of string field theory. He is a radio and television science celebrity and a prolific author. And he was just recently voted one of, one, uh, one of New York's smartest 100 people. Please help me welcome Professor Michio Kaku. Thank you very much. After such a great introduction, I can't wait to hear the speaker myself. <laughs> First of all, I have an admission to make. It's true that I was voted one of the 100 smartest people in New York, but in all fairness, in all fairness, I have to admit that Madonna also made that same list. <laughs> so how accurate could that list be? <laughs> I'm a physicist. We are the ones who invented the laser. We invented the transistor. We helped to make the electronic computer, the internet. We wrote the World Wide Web. We helped to invent television, radio, x-rays, MRI scans, PET scans. Everything you see in the 20th century can be traced back to a physicist. And now we're inventing the 21st century. So today I'm going to give you a guided tour, a guided tour of the next 20, 30 years. How will we live? How will we make money? How will business, commerce exist into the future? Of course, future prediction is difficult. Let me quote from that great philosopher of the Western world, Yogi Berra. <laughs> Yogi, Berra Yogi Berra once said, quote, Prediction is awfully hard to do, especially if it's about the future. <laughs> well, we physicists not only talk about the past, the present, but way into the future, a cosmological future. Let me quote from that other great philosopher of the Western world, Woody Allen. Woody Allen once said, quote, eternity is an awful long time, especially toward the end, <laughs> unquote. Well, when we physicists helped to invent the internet, one physicist made a prediction. He predicted that the internet would become a forum of high culture, high art, and high society. Well, today we know that 5% of the internet is pornography. But that's because teenage boys log on to the internet. Just wait until the grandmas and grandpas log on to the internet, then 50% of the internet will be pornography. <laughs> now let me say, just before I begin a guided tour of the future, let me say that I got into technology, physics, and science when I was a child. When I was in high school, I went up to my mom one day and I said, Mom, can I have permission to build an atom smasher in the garage? A 2.3 million electron volt betatron particle accelerator in the garage. And my mom kind of stared at me and she said, sure, why not? And don't forget to take out the garbage. <laughs> well, I took out the garbage. I got 400 pounds of transformer steel, 22 miles of copper wire, and I built a 6 kilowatt, 2.3 million electron volt atom smasher in the garage. The magnetic field was so powerful that as you walked by, it would pull the fillings out of your teeth <laughs> if you got too close. Finally, it was ready. I closed my eyes, I plugged in the machine, and I heard this crackling sound of 6 kilowatts of power surge through the coils. And then I heard this pop, pop, pop sound as I blew out every single fuse in the house. Well, my poor mom, she'd come home from a hard day's work. All the lights would flicker and die. And then she would say, why couldn't I have a son who plays baseball? Maybe if I buy him a basketball. And for God's sake, why can't he find a nice Japanese girl? What's <laughs> wrong with him? Well, nothing was wrong with me because I was on a journey to understand the future. So let's get into the next slide. First of all, this is my latest book, New York Times bestseller. It's going to be made into a television program in December, December 1st. Watch for it on the Science Channel. Sci-Fi Science, Physics of the Impossible, 12 episodes that I'll be hosting. Everything you wanted to know about starships, warp drive, antimatter, teleportation, invisibility, parallel universes, everything you see on the silver screen decoded in the language of television. 
First of all, this is the internet. This is one of the creations that we physicists help to bring forth. Notice that the internet corresponds to prosperity. Wherever you see hits, wherever you see these links, you see prosperity. Science is the engine of prosperity, and never forget that. This is the internet, as you can see here, every line corresponding to millions of hits. This is where commerce, education, mathematics, science, as well as YouTube and gossip, this is where it all happens on the web. And this is how you will communicate with the web in the future. These are eyeglasses that communicate to the web. You can download any video, you can download any website, and they will also recognize people's faces. How many times have you been at a conference like this and you bump into somebody and you say, who is this person? It's John, Jim, Jake, I know this person, who is it? In the future, your eyeglasses will say, it's Jim, stupid. <laughs> Remember? You met him last week. Do you want to see his entire biography for you in the lens of your glasses? Or let's say you're looking for a job. It's hard times out there, and you're at a cocktail party, but you don't know who the heavy hitters are. In the future, you'll know exactly who to suck up to at any cocktail party. <laughs> but let's say you don't want to look like a refugee from Star Trek. In the future, these are going to be fashionable. Children will love these glasses. Children will have their home entertainment center in their eyeglasses. You'll be able to communicate, download videos, be able to do all sorts of stuff. This is your home office away from home. Now, let's say you don't wear glasses. Then what should you do? You should put on contact lens. This is the internet on a contact lens. You'll wear these, and you will see a whole new world open up, especially if you're a high school student taking a final exam. <laughs> you'll be able to download any answer that, of course, comes from memorization just by thinking about it. So how do you go online in the future? You blink. And let's say you're a tourist going through a foreign land and you don't know what people are saying. No problem. You will hear subtitles. You will have subtitles in your contact lens decoding what people are saying. Let's say you visit Rome and you see the ruins of the great Roman Empire. What a shame. There's almost nothing left of the Roman Empire. In the future, when you walk through the Colosseum, you walk through the Forum, you will see the recreation of the Roman Empire as you walk, as you walk through the ruins. This is called augmented reality. Now, when you look at reality, you will see subtitles, you will see explanations, you will identify people's faces, you'll recreate the ruins of the Roman Empire and the great Egyptian culture just by blinking. And how do we know? Well, we physicists are inventing this. This is your cell phone of the future. You will be able to download any video, be able to download any song, any website on your cell phone. But if you have a BlackBerry, you know how hard it is to type on a BlackBerry? You can't type on a BlackBerry, so you have to wait for the future. This is e-paper, electronic paper. Paper that costs as much, electronic paper that costs even less than ordinary paper. This is your cell phone. You simply scroll out a PC screen. We are making e-paper even as we speak. In the future, your wallpaper, your wallpaper will be intelligent. Now, how do we know this? Because we have something called Moore's Law. Moore's Law says the computer power doubles every 18 months. Moore's Law will keep on chugging away till around 2020 when it finally collapses. By then, Silicon Valley could become a rust belt after 2020 but that's another story. We know that by 2020, chips will cost about a penny. About a penny. So where will computers be in the future? Everywhere and nowhere. Where is electricity today? Electricity is hidden in the walls. When you walk into a room, you assume that the walls are electrified. You look for the light switch, right? In the future, when you walk into a room, you'll assume that everything is intelligent and you look for the internet portal instead of the light switch.
This is your living room of the future. You'll go up to your wall screen and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Let's say you're a college kid. We all know what you do on Friday night if you can't get a date. You get stone drunk. In the future, on campus, you go to the wall screen and you say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's available tonight? Your internet screen scans the internet for all the other co-eds who are also looking at their blank internet connection and saying, gee, what's there to do Friday night? And after seeing a movie at the virtual reality parlor, you'll take your date home and you'll say, mirror, mirror on the wall. We want to see Casablanca. Except, remove Humphrey Bogart's face and put my face instead. And remove Ingrid Bergman's face and put my date's face instead. Let's say you're lonely. It's Christmas time. You have one child in England, another child in Australia, another child in South Africa. You go to the wall screen and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. We want to celebrate Christmas. Please contact all the other screens of my family, and we'll all get together. We'll all put on our contact lens, and it'll be just like home. That dog you see on that screen, it's a virtual dog. It doesn't really exist. It runs, barks, babysits your kids. That dog does everything except pee on your carpet. Chips will cost a penny in the future. This means that chips will be placed in toys. This means that there is going to be a problem for the English language, a contradiction in terms called smart Barbie dolls. Another contradiction in terms is Microsoft Works. <laughs> that is also a contradiction in terms. This is your office of the future. When computers only cost a penny, that's cheaper than scrap paper. You'll simply scribble on it, throw it away. As you move from room to room, the files follow you because the files are valuable. The computer is almost worthless. So you, it goes with you as you go from room to room. And this is your boardroom of the future where the management immediately can get in contact. And by the way, if you want to see what's happening with the worker, all you have to do is dial into his contact lens. What you see is what he sees. So if you want to know what your child is doing now, no problem. You can actually see what your child is seeing. This is going to revolutionize parenting. Because from now on, you'll know exactly where your kids are and what they're doing, unless they take off their contact lens. This is your cubicle of the future. This is how you will work. And this is the car of the future. Cars will drive themselves. In fact, for the Discovery Channel, they, they placed me in that car, and I had a chance to drive a car with no hands on the steering wheel. GPS makes it work. This is how you will shop in the future. Let's say you're shopping, and your wife sees this beautiful $5,000 Chanel dress, right color, right shape, but it's the wrong size. What do you do? You sigh relief. In the future, your wife will zip out her credit card with all her exact three-dimensional measurements on it, scan it into the thing, email it to the printer, punch out the dress. Your wife will get a perfect dress that fits every time, and you will get the bill. Isn't that interesting? Isn't the future wonderful? This is the future of your bathroom. Your bathroom will have more computer power than any hospital today. You'll go to the bathroom three times a day. You'll visit the doctor three times a day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the cure for cancer. When you feel a tumor in your breast today, it's too late. It's really too late. You have 10 billion cancer cells growing in your breast. Surgery is required immediately. In the future, three times a day, your bathroom will analyze the genomes of bacteria, cancer cells, and proteins. Proteins emitted from cancer colonies years before a tumor forms. And this is how you will, well, we all know what middle-aged men hate the most. Middle-aged men hate the C word, colonoscopy. This is how colonoscopies will be done in the future. This is an aspirin pill. You put a chip in it and a TV camera. It photographs your stomach. It photographs your inside as it goes down your gullet. Ladies and gentlemen, this gives new meaning for the expression, Intel inside. Eventually, they may even be as small as your blood. And the Genome Project. 
makes it possible to grow human organs. This is an ear. It's made out of plastic. You seed it with your own ear cells. It grows, and then the plastic dissolves. This is bone on the left, noses and ears on the right. At the present time, we can grow cartilage, nose, ear, skin, blood vessels, bladders. The first bladder was grown three years ago. The first windpipe was grown six months ago. Let me close on one last note. I spoke recently at the Einstein Centennial, and my favorite Einstein story is this. When Einstein was an old man, he was tired of giving the same talk over and over again. <clears throat> so one day, his chauffeur came up to him and said, Einstein, I'm really a part-time actor. Why don't we switch places? Because I've memorized your talk. I can deliver better than you. So the chauffeur put on a wig, mustache. He became the great Einstein, and Einstein could take a rest. Well, this went very good when they switched places. He gave talks everywhere, but then one day, a mathematician in the back asked a very difficult question. And then Einstein thought, oh, the jig is up. But then the chauffeur said, that question is so elementary that even my chauffeur here can answer it for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been a great audience. And maybe if there's time, I'll take a few questions.